Hey there, welcome back to a little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to be looking at a function called row major ARF. So, you've probably stumbled on ARF before, which allows us to get the element out of an array. So, let's say for this one dimensional array, also known as a vector up here, uh, we can get the first element, we can get the third element, and we get what we expect, right? These elements coming out of this array. Now, when we ARF into a multi dimensional array, which is this 2D array down here, one with two rows and three columns. Um, we have to specify two subscripts. So this will be row zero and column one, which is, oh, whoops. Oh yeah, I'm still addressing array zero. I should be doing array one. And you can see we get 20 now. And if we change this zero here to one, we're now going to row one. So we should be getting 60 back, which is great. So what is this row major ARF? What it allows us to do is to index into any dimensional array using one subscript. So let's see that in practice because it's a bit weird to listen to. So for array zero, it's going to make no difference, right? See, we're getting the elements back in the order we expect. If we try and access something outside the array, of course, it's going to throw us an exception and tell us we're trying to access something outside of an array. But let's do this again for array one. So we get this time we're specifying only one subscript, which wasn't valid um, with a ref2, because we're indexing into a multi-dimensional array. But this time we can. So we specify one, two, three, and now we're down on the second row. So you can see what's happening. I'll just finish off this little run. So what this function does is it allows us to index into um, an any-dimensional array uh, using a single uh, subscript. And it's the row major is saying, according to this function, which elements are together next to each other um, in memory. So uh, in memory, or at least in the ordering of this array, the apparent ordering. So yes, the zeroth element um, in row major is this guy here. And then we work across the row, and then we go down to the next row. So because we're walking over the row first, it's row major. You can also have column major, but I don't think there's a function that exposes that in, uh, in common lisp. But anyway, that's what that does. There's, a little, uh, there's another function that kind of goes hand in hand with this one. Um, let's see, it's array row major index. Yes, this one's kind of handy too. You use it a little less. What you do is you give it an array, and then you give it the subscripts that you would normally give it. Um, if you were accessing it like via a ref. So let's say for this element here. So that's a row one um, Again, remember zero indexing. So this is row zero row one and column two and We hit return and it's going to tell us five so zero one two three four five It's giving us the index that you would pass to row major a ref um, In order to Get that element back the one we were just addressing a minute ago. So that's really all there is to that. You might use this, say if you wanted to just walk across an array um, and mutate it somehow, maybe double all the element, the, the value of all the elements. Um, rather than writing a big nested list that's going to walk over each dimension of the array and ties you to your code to whatever, the dim dimensionality of that array, to get wordy for a second, um, instead, you can use this. You can just get the entire size of the array, which we'll look at in another video. And then we can just do a regular old loop for i is less than whatever the total length is, and then walk across it using row major ARF. That's all i got for you for now. See you next time, and thanks for stopping by.